during this part of our journey, um, we're going to be talking about air pressure. So this is a really fun party trick that you can do at the dinner table um, or when we can finally leave our houses and go out into the public. We could show our friends at a party. Um, before we get started, I want you to make sure that you have an index card or I have cardstock, so it's a thicker paper. So you'll need paper, you'll need a plastic cup or a glass cup. Um, if, the, if you're new to doing this, I, you'd probably prefer to use a plastic cup just to start. You might not get it the first time, but that's okay. It's pretty simple. It just takes um, some time and effort and a little bit of practice. I might not even get it, so we'll have our fingers crossed. So, and you'll also need some regular tap water. And I recommend getting a little tray. The tray will help you um, if you have any spillage. So the first step of doing this is I'm putting my cup in the middle of my tray. And now I'm going to pour my water slowly into the cup. All right, and I'm filling this almost to the top. Okay, great. All right, now I'm also going to, so I have a, actually a circular roll of duct tape that's basically the size of my cup. So I'm gonna use this to trace my paper so that I know that it's big enough for the opening of the cup. So I traced a circle, but I'm actually going to cut a square around it. So it doesn't have to be perfect square. As long as it covers the opening of your cup, it should be okay. So the next step is you are going to put your piece of paper over your cup and place your hand over the opening of the cup. And quickly but carefully, you're going to flip your cup upside down. Now you might have heard a little drippage, but that's okay. All right, now I'm gonna gently remove my hand. Okay, so you see how it's holding up the paper. All right, so how do you think the trick is, is going on? Well, you guessed it, it's the air that we breathe. The air molecules in the atmosphere exert pressure on everything. So when you first turn the cup inside, um, upside down, the pressure of the air inside of the cup and the air pressure outside of the cup are equal. If you look closely, however, so I'll come in here. If you look closely, there's a little bit of water on the outside of the cup. The force of gravity naturally pulls down on the water, creating an airtight seal between the rim of the glass. And that's what happens. <laughs> if you make a sudden move, you get it everywhere. Thank God it's water. All right, so as I was saying, the force of gravity between the cup and the air caused you to have a hold on that paper and it equaled the amount of gravity between the two, allowing you to turn the cup over and the water not go anywhere. But clearly, a little tiny move made the water pour out because now it's heavier. So we're gonna move on to the next part. All right, so for this, experiment, you're going to create a cloud inside of a jar. Now clouds form when water vapor rises into the atmosphere and then condenses onto microscopic particles. For example, dust, dirt, and other particles in the air. 
So there's two ways to do this. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you one way and then I'll show the other way. What you'll need for this is a mason jar with a lid or if you have a regular jar and perhaps a small bowl to put on top of it, that's fine. Um, an empty jar, you know, if you have like jelly or something like that, you can use the lid for that as well. So I'm going to also put a little bit of food coloring into the water so that you can see it a little bit better. All right, let me lower this down. Okay, so you'll also need um, boiled water. So just be careful when you're boiling the water, you can see the steam coming out from mine. And you'll need a, a few cubes of ice. All right, so I'm going to put a cup of water in my mason jar. Got a cup. Okay, great. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit of food coloring just so we could see it a little bit better. Okay, great. All right, now I'm gonna put my lid right on top and I'm gonna put a couple of pieces of ice. Okay. Now this one takes a couple of minutes and I'm gonna put, so you can see it a little bit better maybe. So this takes a few minutes for it to work. Put another piece of ice. Okay, and we wait. difficult to see on camera, but so I'm going to open this up so you can see it a little bit better, but you have your hot water, right? And you have your ice and it's trapped inside of there. So it's creating a cloud inside of your jar. So if I open this up, you can actually see a little bit, tiny bit. Okay, I'm gonna show you a different way to do this. So the second way to do this, you'll definitely need an adult for. So I'm gonna actually empty my hot water to a different cup. Okay, I'm gonna refill this with my hot water. Great. This time I'm not gonna even, I'm not going to even add any food coloring to this. So you'll need a book of matches. And like I said, you'll definitely need an adult to do this for you. So you'll have your supervision light the match. Okay, and you're gonna hold that over the cup for just a few seconds. Okay, and now empty it in there, cover up and put your ice right on top of your jar. Okay, as you see, slowly but surely, the cloud is starting to form. Okay, here's the cool part. If you wait a little bit longer, you'll have a thicker cloud, but I'm going to open up my jar and let my cloud pour out. How cool. So for this next part, 
we're gonna make a tasty treat to discuss using air in baking. Air gives a major lift to baking. They are simple to make, but take some time to bake. So I will show you how to make them, but I made some in advance to show you a finished product. What you'll need for this recipe are two egg whites at room temperature, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, a pinch of cream of tartar. Now, not everyone has this in their baking supplies, so if you need to use a little bit of vinegar or lemon juice, you could do that. The cream of tartar is made to stabilize your egg whites to make them a little more firm. You'll need a half a cup of powdered sugar. I've already measured mine out, but you can also use regular sugar if you don't have powdered sugar. So the first step is to preheat your oven to 225 degrees, and you're going to set up a tray with parchment paper so we can use it for baking our meringues. So the first step is, well, besides turning on your oven, is to start beating your egg whites in a clean bowl until they are foamy. Now I'm going to add um, a little bit of cream of tartar by the pinch um, instead of adding an actual measurement. So let's first beat the egg whites and then we'll beat in the vanilla and the cream of tartar. You wanna make these until they are foamy. <laughs> we have our egg whites that are nice and frothy. So the next part is we are going to add a pinch of our cream of tartar. Right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit. You don't wanna add too much. You don't want them to be too firm. So I'm just adding a little, little pinch. Okay, and I'm gonna also add, or going to add a little bit of vanilla. You can eyeball this. You can even use the cap as a measurement if you'd like. I use half a half a cap. Awesome. Okay. We're gonna start beating it. Now, as I'm beating it, I'm going to move this to my right because I am going to start gradually adding my sugar. And I'm gonna actually use a tablespoon to help me, but while I'm beating this, I'm gonna gradually add my sugar until soft, um, stiff peaks form. <laughs>
so after you beat it, it'll start to form these firm peaks. Okay, and we're going to transfer this to a, um, I'm going to transfer mine into a Ziploc bag, um, kind of like a pastry bag so that I could drop it onto my parchment paper, but you can also use a spoon to drop spoonfuls. Um, that should work out perfectly. Just give me one second and I'm going to transfer mine to my Ziploc bag. Okay, so with my Ziploc bag, I have a little um, attachment, but like I said, you could just use spoonfuls. So I'm just going to, I just like doing it because it makes a really cute design. Okay, I'm just gonna pop these in my oven. So I put my meringues in my oven and I'm going to set my timer for an hour. And then we'll check on them, open up the oven to let some air out and let them cool off. Okay, so I removed my meringue cookies from the oven. Look how cute they are. You could put these on top of a pie. You can actually put them on ice cream. You can add cinnamon or sh uh, colored sugar to make them even prettier. And they're really delicious. They kind of taste like a marshmallow cookie. So don't mind if I do. Mm, so good. All right, girls, so thanks for joining me today for our Cadet Breathe journey. Please do remember that while you have the time, start brainstorming maybe on a Zoom call with your troop um, or your friends that um, are in Girl Scouts as well about a take action project, which uh, translates into your alert award for our Breathe journey. I hope you're staying safe, you're staying healthy, and we'll see you next time.